to over there where Megs has been having a smashing time tonight. <laughs> I'm going to not react to that whatsoever. It has all been cleared up. Don't you worry about that. Now, I love whenever I go to places like this, really getting my eye into the cracks and crevices of the habitat because you truly know, never know what you're going to find. Now, we've said across this super national nature reserve that there are six native species of reptile, but tonight I'm going to introduce you to a seventh that accidentally found its way here. We sent off our wildlife camera operators to go and get a glimpse of this. And I am talking, of course, about wall lizards that found their way here to Corf Castle, or first documented here, in 2006, although the population may be older. Their home, as the name suggests, is walls, boulders, rocks, where they live in and around, basking in the sun. And as reptiles, of course, they are entirely dependent on the sun's heat for, to regulate their own body temperature as well for their own reproduction purposes. They are a non-native species, look at it there, getting its nose in for an invertebrate that's tucked itself away in the crevice of one of those walls. But a DNA study found that the population here at Corf Castle most likely originated from around v uh, Venice, which is rather interesting. It's amazing how they made their way here. They found their way here in the, uh, the Victorian era when they were kept as pets and sadly then released. And now there are small populations pockets across the UK. But of course, it does beg the question, the population here in the UK is very different from where they originate in Europe and in Venice. So how do they tolerate these kind of colder, milder climates? Well, we got sent in this photo by one of the fantastic volunteers at the uh, Purbeck Heath National Nature Reserve, Terry Bagley. And this is a wall lizard basking in the sun. Now, it's really hard to sex wall lizards. You have to know about the top of their head. But we think this is a female because of the bulge in her stomach where there are hopefully a few eggs ready to be laid in the soft sand and soil uh, where they will then be incubated by that soil and then will hatch as young wall lizards. But of course, in those milder climates, then actually there's less embryonic development if it's too cold and then less reproductive success. But wall lizards have come up with an ingenious way of mitigating against that. And have a look over here. So here I have an egg of a wall lizard from Europe and one from the UK. Now let's take a look at Europe first. If I remove my eggshell, you'll see an embryo there, which is, you know, slightly developed, but not overly so. And if I come to the UK, my embryo is much more developed there. And there's two reasons for that. Firstly, it's something called egg retention. So the females won't lay uh, as quickly as the ones in Europe. They will keep those eggs in their bellies for as long as possible to make the most of that thermoregulation that the female can provide. And the second is that once those eggs have laid, the, development, uh, the developmental process happens a lot faster. So overall, actually, wall lizards are able to reduce incubation time in the sand and the soil, depending on where they've, where they've laid their eggs, by about one to two weeks, mitigating against that colder climate and really kind of helping the population here within the UK. It's amazing to see how these animals are able to develop in such a short period of time since the Victorian era. I mean, it really is evolution in action and it's brilliant to see.